That performance by James Harden needs, needs, mm. requires an investigation. You want to max this dude out, this version of Harden, in your Philly? I mean, we know maury has got a sweet tooth for the guy. How can James Harden take two damn shots, Key, in the second half? Two shots in the second half. And I, I really wonder what's going through Joel Embiid's head. And now we get into a big-time game, and James is nowhere to be found. You know, since uh, we got him, everybody expected uh, the Houston James Harden, uh, but that's not who he is anymore. Really quick, before I begin, if you guys can smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, this seriously makes a huge difference to my videos and lets YouTube know to recommend this video to a brand new audience. So thank you so much for doing that, and let's begin. Your reaction to what we just saw from Philly. Congratulations to the Heat. On they go to the conference final. They certainly deserved it. They were clearly the better team. The Heat, we'll have time to talk about them. The Heat were the better team, but it was a deplorable performance by the Philadelphia 76ers. We know Danny Green got hurt. We know Joel and B wasn't 100%. That performance by James Harden needs, needs, mm. requires an investigation. How in God's name do you play? You go 22 minutes in the second half and attempt one shot. It was a horrific performance, anemic and impotent performance by James Harden. And I'm really interested in seeing what the Philadelphia 76ers are going to do with Doc Rivers because I smell something and it don't smell right at all and I'm going to leave it at that for the moment. Well a couple of things Stephen A. When you saw him be mic'd up in the huddle that wasn't a good look for the coach. When they're down nine and it's less than a minute to go and they letting the clock run out and they're not trying to extend the game that's a bad look for the coach. The other thing we're going to make sure we give Joel and B credit for being a warrior yep. getting out there with a mask playing with a busted right. thumb but that's what we also expect from our great players and our MVPs. This time last year, Giannis had a horrific knee injury, and we didn't know if he was going to play the NBA final. He came back, he was dominant, they won the championship. In Philly, you want Joel Embiid to be that guy to take you there, and I believe he can take you there, but clearly he needs help. And James Harden can be your second fiddle. Yeah. Another domino, you clearly cannot give James Harden a max deal. Yeah. And if you're talking about getting rid of Doc Rivers to bring in Mike D'Antoni, Dan like, that ain't the listen, solution. Listen, listen, we got to give Embiid's props because, listen, sometimes when you get injured and you come back, you don't always perform well. We understand that with everybody, mm -hmm. but the no effort is what we're looking for from everybody. What did we see from James Harden tonight? I'm telling you, telling you right now, unless you're a defensive wizard, a Draymond Green, a Dennis Rodman, people like that, no, you can avoid shooting the basketball. But when you are a three or four-time league scoring champion, when you've made your money, your bread and butter by putting the ball in the hole, and you literally attempt one shot over 20 to 22 minutes in a second half and two shots for the entire second half, that is egregious. It is horrible. And it's just no other way to slice. Oh, well, let me break down some more bad, poor parts of his game. He didn't play defense. He was giving up offensive rebounds. Well, that's always. Tucker, but that's always. P.J. Tucker that's was hustling him the that's ball. Not, that's he not He came abnormal. out of the second, second half, dribbled the ball. That's not abnormal. Foot, gave up a three-point play to Jimmy Butler. I gave you abnormality. Jeez. The abnormality was the shot attempts. Everything else you said he always does. So the Heat advance, and Tim Legler's with us in studio, and... Uh, we got plenty of time to talk about them because they're, they're moving on. And let's not get to the Philadelphia portion without acknowledging yeah. what they did well. Great defense. They've been the one seed for a reason. The Heat did what well. Yeah, give them all the love, man. Exceptionally well coached. Tough. Jimmy Butler's an absolute beast. Their mindset, top notch, number one seed. And they dispatched to them. And I feel almost guilty that I thought the Sixers were going to fight tonight. And I said that before the game. I expected Philly to fight and, and, and win the game. Uh -huh. uh, I, I apologize to the Heat because they were that much better and uh, give them all the love of the world. We're going to see a lot more of that team. Okay. Now, what, what you would like to discuss, guy that lives close to Philly, got a lot of Sixer friends that are Damn. your boys on the text chain and all the rest, right? Uh, how the year started for the Sixers and how it ended, go. All right. I'm going to start with this, what happened tonight, and finish at the end with what sabotaged your season and derailed the whole thing. And it's not just one guy. Okay. It's a couple of guys. And I'm going to tie in the other one in a second. But first, let's talk about tonight. All right? So, let's start with this. 
you look at this and you say, okay, where are we at in the game? It's 14. It's five minutes to go in the third. Well, I think the Bucks were down 14 with six or seven minutes to go in the game. They were. Won the game. Okay, so you got a whole other quarter here. The game's not over, but it's slipping away. Here's what they decide to go to as a set play. They're thinking, all right, we're not going to go to a beat or hard. That's fine. Or Maxi, we're going to try to run a set play to get a three-pointer for Niang. Now, here's what they're looking to do. And James Harden's got to read this. So they're going to try to get a screen here. And then you're going to get a bead come in and clean up for Niang and float him over here. And you're going to run a flare trying to get a three. The key is James Harden has to read these two defenders. So when this play first starts out, and you're going to see the jump out right here. The defender jumps out. Well, Harden needs to now separate back a little bit so we can still get the screen and have an angle to deliver the pass. He doesn't do that. Instead, he floats this. And you can take a look at Bam out of bio. I mean, he is reading this all the way. His eyes are on it. He's going to shoot the gap right here and get into this passing lane. Ball stolen. But here's what I want you to focus on. Ball is intercepted. Here is James Harden. Yep. Here is Bam out of bio. Yep. They are dead even. It's a foot race, and one guy's dribbling. You're and down he's a four, center. You're down 14 in a closeout game. And you have a guard trying to track down a center, and the guard doesn't that has the advantage of not having the basketball. Okay. Okay, this is where they start out. They're even in the backcourt, and that's where they end up. About 15 feet of separation, and Bam Adebayo goes in for a dunk. The air is leaving the building. At this point, I know a lot of people probably headed to the parking lot. It gets worse. Now we come down here, we're going to run some action. This is all just token nonsense at the beginning. They're not trying to do anything because at the end of this, they're going to come back to James Harden. And why? This is what they signed him for. They signed him to win these. Win these. These one-on-ones in front of you because at the end of the day, you've got to engage multiple backline defenders to give one of these guys an opportunity to get a shot. But watch what happens. He jabs. And Scott, this was telling to me, right? This is pretty much James Harden at this stage of his career. This is what Embiid alluded to. You jab, there's no reaction on the part of the defender. None. Adebayo actually stays up. He actually presses up into him on the jab step. Tries to go by him. Nothing happens. You can see kind of running in mud. Gets a chance to regroup. This was more telling. He reaches with his right hand right there. You can see Adebayo uh, Oladipo reaches with his right hand. Now, this should be a crossover to his strong hand and downhill. That's what James Harden was brought here to do. And you're going to see a little token help here by Hero, but he doesn't really commit. Harden has to get into the gap so that he can occupy these two guys on the back line and make a play for one of your two teammates. He just can't do it. Goes behind his back for no reason. Again, gets the ball taken away and again goes into jog mode back. There were so many plays I could have written down that really look like that. And what it came down to for me was this. I said two guys derailed the season. Ben Simmons did it first because he wanted no part of that environment last year in the Atlanta Hawks series and then quit on the team. Mm -hmm. They waited two-thirds of a season to get this guy. He's the replacement. He comes in. He came in specifically to help Joel Embiid navigate these scenarios. And again, you get a guy that doesn't really want a part of this and has no responsibility to the guys on his team. That's what bothered me the most about this. Where's your accountability to your star player? Where's your accountability to the coaching staff, to your teammates in the locker room? I just didn't see any of it. And even the comments after, it's just not there. And that, to me, is what's most alarming about the end of the Sixers season. He said he's, he'd opt in, but I mean, the, the, the thing that I, that I, I look, you sit in these seats, and, and, and I always want to be careful because sure. y- you say it about somebody, he doesn't care. That, I'm not going to say that, but there's when you get evidence in these closeout games, you go back five years in a day to the infamous 39-point loss at home playing for Houston, the Houston version of Harden, no Kawhi, you get beat by 39, he didn't shoot in the first quarter. He was 2 of 11 and scored 10 in a game they lost by 39 points, a closeout game. Now in this game, he doesn't score in the second half, goes 4 of 9 and scores 11. And whatever he feels, however much he cares, I mean, I, I, I don't know what it is. I can't say. I just know that what we see and the evidence that continues to mount in these spots is enough to say, you want to max this dude out, this version of Harden? And you're Philly? I mean, we know maury has got a sweet tooth for the guy. You you tell me, all your Sixer friends, what are they saying? Yeah, he's going to get that $47 million. Obviously, he's going to opt into that. Okay. I don't know how you could potentially give him that kind of money and sleep at night for Daryl Morey based on what you just saw. And it's not he played poorly. I can live with that. Guys play poorly all the time. I certainly did it enough when I played. Yeah. It's not that. It's when you play that far from the norm in terms of your mindset and aggressiveness. That's impossible to overcome. 
and it's deflating to everybody on your team and everybody in that building. Mm-hmm. You brought up the Houston game. That's a great example. It's I've just used one that, of them. but I've used that one many, many, many times because that was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. This one, what do you take? Two shots in the second half? Four of nine, two didn't score two shots. One shot in the third quarter, one shot in the fourth. That's one more shot than I took. And I was sitting in the oh, office watching there, the game with you. Some shots up. Oh, I would have got him up. I mean, he took one more shot than I did. Yeah. You know, I, and so it's when you're that different from who you are in terms of your aggressiveness, you can't overcome it. Particularly when you've got a guy out there that's your co-star that's playing with what he's playing with and playing through what he is. I feel bad for Beanie. He didn't play well tonight. I am not laying this in his lap whatsoever. That elbow by by Siakam was unfortunate. It derailed his postseason, but he gave you what he had. He counted on Harden to be there in a moment like this, and he just wasn't engaged at all in the game. I wrote wrote this down. You're saying this far from who you are. I think the question now is, who are you? Who are you if you're Harden? And you're you're a guy that's about to potentially get five for 275. I mean. (laughs) Saw a great quote from a great great players help you win winning players make you great and that's the honest truth and, and they didn't have enough of it and this is two years in a row I had a friend text me tonight and say I didn't think it was possible to be more depressed at the end of a season than I was last year right. against the Atlanta Hawks and yet here you go and as you said about Philadelphia fans all they want is for to, to believe that their athletes care as much as they do and that's a city that cares passionately about their team no doubt <sighs> Four of nine, 11 points. Sixers eliminated by the Miami Heat. Jimmy Butler with the dagger three. James Harden, a non-factor. How can James Harden take two damn shots, Key, in the second half? Two shots in the second half. Two. And one of the shots was when they were down 20 points late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it doesn't count. You can't even count that one. Like, what, what are we doing here? Like, this, this is clutch time when you were brought here to be that guy next to Joel Embiid. And even if you are not feeling aggressive, your words after the game about, oh, they didn't run any plays here and the ball never ended back in my hands. What? what kind of horrible excuse is that? All I'm hearing is excuses from him. And my man was a no-show. Uh, James Harden was a no-show. Need to be a no-show you needed at the him club. the most. They were getting booed. And let me say this last thing. Max Struess and Gabe Vincent started last night. Two undrafted players for the Miami Heat with no Kyle Lowry, and they dominated the 76ers in Philly. If you're going to go out go out being aggressive. What's up with his handles, though, Jay? That doesn't look right handles, either to me. The whole, the whole game looks sloppy. Yeah. The body looks sloppy. The game looks sloppy. He looked the same body. Everybody keeps saying he's out of shape. I'm like, his body looked the same to me. Nothing. You know where it is, okay? He doesn't, like, look, he doesn't look like he looked at the end in Houston when he looked like the Michelin man. Now he just looks normal to me now. But see, you know what? It, it, it's the... It's the lack of pop pop with the with the dribbling, right? So as a guard, every day for 45 minutes, I do ball handling warm up exercises, right? As a player, get in there because my day in the day has to be tight, key. Everything with ba da ba 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 ba. Like everything, all my moves are sharp. When I watch James, all the moves seem lackadaisical. Yeah. All the moves seem loose. They don't seem uh, like like they're tight. composite yeah. tight. Yeah, it, it seems no, and off. his handles reflect it. That's what's shocking to me. Like, yo, James Harden, his hand, what's up with the handles? The body language was pretty poor. Two shots for James Harden in the second half of this one, too. And he, he made neither of them. He had 11 points at the half, and he finished with 11 points. So. Amy, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Amy, Mark. Off, forgive me. So as I look at this box score, ladies and gentlemen, you know, Tobias Harris, 13 shot attempts. Joel Embiid, 24. Maxie, 22. James Harden, 4 for 9. I think we have to look at that and we have to say what's going on here. Why would one of the most prolific scorers in NBA history shoot the ball nine times in a closeout game? And they say, okay, that's he facilitated. He had nine assists. That's wonderful. But a big thing with James Harden is he's a great, great distributor of the basketball. But when it's four for nine, that's not enough for one of the most prolific scorers in NBA history to shot attempts. To me, Miami's an incredible defensive team, but they not. I can go out there and get more than nine shot attempts, period. Right Me, now. Right now. Yeah, I right don't now. doubt that. I'm in great shape, but I'm not NBA ready. And I go out there and get more shot, nine shot attempts. I don't like that. I bet you get to the free throw line more than oh, zero absolutely. times, too. There was a point in the fourth quarter where Joel Embiid looked 
exhausted. I right. mean, he gave it his all. I know he was just, what, 7 for 24 from the field, 2012, but battling all those injuries. But for Jimmy Butler to say, hey, you know, I, I still kind of wish I was part of that team because I love those guys, including Joel Embiid. But I'm with my guys now. What does that tell you about his relationship with Embiid and what those guys did go through together? Listen, man, real recognizes real. Jimmy Butler understands what Joel Embiid is. And he also said Joel Embiid was his choice for MVP this year. Um, Jimmy understands that Joel Embiid is a two-way big. He's a, dog, he's a monster on the block. He has an incredible skill set. And he knows when, when it's time to go out there and play, Joel's always going to be ready. He's always going to bring his skill set to the table. And so that's why Jimmy's like, I have respect for Joel. He, guys that are dogs, they speak the same language. They understand what they're about. And Jimmy, he sees that in Joel, and Joel sees that in Jimmy. That's why they have that, that strong relationship, even though they're not on the same team. Do you think those guys see that in James Harden, who not now. scored 11 points, none of them in the second half, took just two shots in the second half, and that second shot came when the game was clearly out of range? Uh, no, you, you, there has to be questions that are being asked in that locker room in Philadelphia right now. And I, I really wonder what's going through Joel Embiid's head. Joel Embiid is sitting there thinking, okay, last year I had to deal with Ben Simmons and at the beginning of this season, he's gone, we bring in James Harden. I think that cures the problem. And now we get into a big time game and James is nowhere to be found. I don't mind James Harden missing shots. If James comes out there and doesn't play well, I have no problem with that. But we've seen this before. We saw this when he was in Houston against the Spurs. And I think Kawhi wasn't playing and Manu Ginobili wasn't playing. And James just looked like he would rather be somewhere else, look disinterested. And so now what we're seeing is a pattern of behavior. And if you're Philadelphia, that's what's disturbing to you because you saw this in Houston. You saw this in Brooklyn. We're seeing it now. We just saw it against, we just saw it in Philly. And you got to ask yourself, do we want to pay this man $50 million over the next couple of years? I think the big number is over 60 mil uh, per year towards the back end of that, just so you understand mm. what the Supermax is for mm. James Harden, a former MVP. Joel, how much more do you think you needed from James Harden? You know, when you look at his points output and whatever. Oh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I think he's been, uh, obviously, uh, I'm sure, you know, since uh, we got him, everybody expected uh, the Houston James Harden. Uh, but that's not who he is anymore. Uh, he's more of a playmaker. Uh, I thought, you know, yeah, at times, you know, could have been, uh, as all of us, uh, could have been more aggressive. <laughs>